Week one of Donald Trump's hush money trial is in the books, and jurors now have a three-day weekend to mull over everything they've heard so far. Prosecutors have called three witnesses, including Trump's former assistant and a banker from Michael Cohen, Trump's former attorney and fixer. But the bulk of this week's testimony came from David Pecker. That's the former publisher of the National Enquirer who described how his publication suppressed negative stories about Trump as he was running for the presidency in 2016. John Dean served as White House counsel during the Nixon administration, and he joins us now. John, always lovely to see you. Thanks for uh, coming on on this Saturday. I'm curious, just first of all, what you've taken away from this first week. Well, you don't win or lose a case on on a week. Uh, You actually could lose it if you uh, fumbled too badly, but I... This case has shown this prosecuting team knows what they're doing. They're telling a story. They've set an overview. They've sort of laid the basis of the broad conspiracy to influence the election. Uh, And they're now getting down into some of the details uh, for the jury. So it's just it's a stage setter at this point. Pecker was a good witness, uh, the, the publisher of the National Enquirer. And it's been an attention-grabbing week for the jury and the public. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's a case that likely is largely going to hinge on a lot of documents. Uh, what exactly are prosecutors yes. looking to show as they call witnesses like Michael Cohen's former banker to the stand and as they try to walk this jury through a lot of documents? Well, with the banker, they're setting the stage of the finances that were arranged uh, to pay off uh, Stormy Daniels during the later phases of the story, which we know about broadly, but we don't have the details yet. So w- what they have also, apparently, are a lot of documents. What we don't know, if they have or do not have, is information or witnesses or documents that directly link Donald Trump to the falsification of the documents or whether that's going to be something that has to be inferred by really overwhelming evidence that uh, there's no other way it could have happened other than from his allowing it to happen. That's a thinner case. If they have a direct witness or if they have direct evidence, that's going to be a powerful case. So we, this is what's uh, keeping me on the edge of my seat as I watch what unfolds. Right, because we don't know exactly who they're going to be calling at this point. They have not extended that courtesy no. uh, to the defense. And they said because we don't trust that Donald Trump isn't going to post about this person or, or something like that. Do you think that was the right move on uh, the prosecutor's end? I think it was, and the judge blessed it as well, uh, because judges want to take very good care of their witnesses and their jurors and not have them influenced by outside static like uh, the former president likes to provide for his trials or his events. Uh, This just being another one in his campaign, apparently. Mm -hmm. And there's been so much talk, uh, and he's kind of, the former president's kind of flirted with this, as it were. Will he take the stand? Will he not take the stand? Uh, What do you think about that as as we move into the second week? Jessica, I'd be very surprised if he did take the stand. In in prior trials, he has said uh, that he would take the stand and never showed up to do so. So he's not a good witness. He has shown that in depositions, uh, in the limited testimony he's given in a a civil trial. He showed he was not a good witness. Uh, So it would be it would be unlikely that's going to happen. But I think he wants to give his base the impression that he's a tough guy and he can go take any trial on he wanted to take on. And it'll be his decision not to testify if he doesn't. Mm. All right. John Dean, always good to see you. Thanks so much. We, We appreciate it. Thanks, Jessica.